everybody, I'm Jane. I'm going to be leading you through um, this short mat workout, which focuses on mainly working through the hips. And um, we are going to be working through the whole core, so we're going to be starting with a spinal warm up. Um, just to go through some terminology with you that you may or may not use, uh, be used to hearing. I talk a lot about the pelvic triangle, so I'm going to explain to you what that is so it makes sense when we do the movements. So, um, we've got a three bone in our mat that's at the front of your pelvis, your two pelvic bones, we sometimes call these the hip bones, and we've got the pubic bone, which is the bone right between the legs at the front of the pelvis. So if you were to do a dot to dot, you would have a triangle shape. So that's the pelvic triangle. So we're going to start with our spinal warm up, so the cat stretch. So I'd like you to come into all fours. And just find a place where you feel that your back is level, like the top of the table, the shoulders are lengthening away from the ears, ribs lifting up onto the shoulder blades, and your pelvic triangle is square to the mat. And then focus on your breath, so lateral thoracic breathing, breathing into the back and into the sides of the rib cage. On your out breath, find the pelvic floor and navel to spine connection, maintaining the control of your deep core muscles on the in breath. On your next out breath, curl the tail underneath you to round through that lower spine and then releasing that pelvis back to neutral. So focus on keeping the rib cage, the neck and head still and stable. So you're isolating the movement of the pelvis and the lower spine. As you do this, have an awareness of the four bony landmarks at the bottom of the pelvis. So we've got the pubic bone, which is the bone between the legs at the front of the pelvis, then we've got the tailbone, the coccyx, and then the two sit bones. Now on your backwards tilt, I want you to feel how your, your pubic bone comes closer to your belly button, your tailbone curls under, your two sit bones narrow, and as you release back to that neutral position, I want you to feel how your pubic bone lengthens away from your belly button, your tailbone reaches back to the wall behind you, the two sit bones widen. Now use your next backwards tilt to make your way up into your cat stretch. So curl the pelvis under, lift the back ribs, chin to the chest, so you're looking up at your belly button and then coming back to your neutral spine. So tailbone lengthens back, bone by bone, straighten the spine, head comes at last. So initiate the movement from the pelvis first, delay movement through the neck and head as long as you can, so you feel even distribution of movement through the spine, and then keeping the upwards energy of the abdominals as you come back to your neutral spine, so you're not allowing gravity to sink you down to the mat. And we're doing this to you to really feel the work the abdominals have to do to open up through the back bones of the spine. So once you come back to neutral, I want you to just come onto your belly. So coming down to your elbows, walking those knees back. And we're doing swan prep. So arms are bent at the side of your body. So I call this W-shape arms. Your legs ideally want to be hip distance apart, but I want you to choose the leg position that allows your pelvis to be level on the mat. So those three bony landmarks are equally weighted. Subtly drawing your pubic bone up towards your belly button, keeping your two pelvic bones on the mat here. Now, shoulders should be lengthening away from the ears, and I want you to reach your chest bone forwards to the front edge of the mat and upwards to where the wall meets the ceiling. So you're creating a back bend through the upper spine, and then bring the chest bone down and then bring the head down. Your last rib stays on the mat, so you're isolating this work to the mid upper back area. So you're looking to feel a gentle sense of activity through the back of the rib cage. Checking guys that as you lift through the upper spine, you're not sinking and collapsing through that lower spine. So reinforcing and drawing your pubic bone upwards towards your belly button. When you feel the control of that, push down into your hands and invite the spine to come up a little bit higher. So choose the range that's kind to your spine and then allowing your belly to come down and your ribs then your head comes down last. Focus on creating as much movement through the mid upper back first, so that as you push yourself up onto your lower back, you're evenly distributing those extension forces through the spine. We're not just hinging from one place in your back. So we're doing this to stretch through the front of the spine, but as we climb higher up onto that lower back, this is also a nice way to open up through the front of the hips as well. So we're really lengthening those muscles that run down the front of the pelvis. And then coming back down and then pushing yourself back into your child's pose. So bottom sits back onto your heels and then really stretching out. So just rolling up now and you're going to come onto your bottom. We're going to do spine stretch. 
So spine stretch pretty, pretty much just what it says on the tin, it's a stretch for your back. You're using the strength of your abdominals to achieve that, but um, I'm gonna be focusing on the stretch I'm looking for down the back of the thighs through the hamstrings. So I want you to find your neutral pelvis first, so pelvic triangle square to the wall in front of you. If you're really tight through the back of your thighs, you may benefit from sitting on a block or a cushion just to allow your pelvis to be in a more neutral position. And then I want you to imagine that you're sitting against the wall and you're sliding your spine up that imaginary wall, drawing your abdominals back in the direction of that wall. Now taking the breath in on your out breath, nod your chin towards your chest, and then start to peel your spine away from that wall one bone by one. So you're looking to feel an articulation of your spine, a sense of moving vertebra by vertebra, reaching all the way down towards your feet here. Now holding the stretch at the bottom and using your hands to pull your feet up from your ankles. So this is just a, a little modification at the bottom of your spine stretch because my focus is stretching through the backs of the legs. So I'm using my hands to really pull my feet up through from the ankles and pushing actively through those heels whilst drawing back on the abdominals and then slowly rolling up one one by one. So reversing that spinal articulation head comes up last. So we're going to do that one more time. So nodding the chin and then starting to feel that segmental control. So as I do this, I'm thinking of the back ribs lifting upwards to the ceiling, lower belly pushing the waist back, and then really stretching those hamstrings and through my back muscles. So just hold it here. Now you could choose to focus on your breath here, your lateral thoracic breath, trying to use the breath to bring more expansion in the ribs, but I'm focusing on trying to get my chest a little closer to my thighs here, still trying to lengthen forward through the crown of the head, reaching the shoulders away from the ears, and then slowly rolling up. So just really trying to prepare the hamstrings for some of the work that we're going to be doing. So scooting the hips a little forward and then use your abdominals to come down onto the mat. So once you're down on the mat, just check in with your neutral alignment again. So you want to check that your eye gaze is forward and you feel that your ribs and your sacrum are nice and heavy on the mat and your heels are roughly in line with those sit bones. Just check that the three bones at the front of the pelvis are nice and level with one another. And in this position, let's just spend a few moments revisiting that breath again. So you can have your hands on the ribs or you can let your arms rest on the mat. Now, lateral thoracic breathing means um, sideways breathing into the ribs, but this breathing pattern has a three-dimensional quality to it. So I want you to try and feel the backwards expansion of the ribs. And laying on the mat is a really nice place to feel that. So on your in-breath, focus on widening the back of the rib cage into the mat as the side ribs expand out to the side walls. On your out breath, feel as though the back and sides of the rib cage narrow and come closer together. So make that in breath as big as possible because the, the bigger the inhalation, the bigger the exhalation. And it's on the exhalation we force that abdominal contraction. So the navel naturally draws into the spine. We get the engagement to the pelvic floor. Try to consciously maintain control of those muscles on your in-breath. Now placing your hands on your pelvic bones, we're going to go into a knee fold. So I want you to lift one leg up to tabletop. So your knees over your hip, your shins parallel with the ceiling, placing your foot back down on the spot that it left, and then changing sides. So this exercise is a pelvic stability exercise. Your goal is to keep your pelvis and your spine still and stable against the movement and the weight of your lifted leg. So when the leg lifts up, you're increasing the load going through the torso, which further challenges the abdominals to hold the spine. And because we're only lifting one leg, the weight is greater on the lifted side. And that weight is gonna try and rotate the pelvis to the lifted side. So focus on keeping that opposite side of the pelvis heavy on the mat. So you've got to anticipate that by making it heavier before you even lift. So that action will engage the abdominals, the abdominals stabilise the pelvis and the spine. And just make sure you're not over-efforting that. If you start to feel tension through the neck and the shoulders, that could indicate that you're putting too much effort into that. So 
So once we've got the control here, we're going to start to be a little bit more dynamic with the legs. So lifting one leg to tabletop and then you're going to stretch the leg up and then slowly lower the leg down and then you're going to bend the leg in. So I might just move a little further back guys, otherwise I think I'm going to end up hitting the sofa here. So changing legs. So again, maintaining that pelvic stability and then really feeling that I'm using the front of the thigh to work on straightening the leg so I get the stretch for the back of the thigh. And on the lowering phase, the challenge is to make sure that you're not allowing the weight of your leg to arch your back off the mat. So feel that you're deepening the ribs into the floor and the sacrum into the floor against the weight of that leg. So this is a little preparation for the bicycle. I'm really lengthening through the front of the hip on the lowering phase, stretching through the back of the hip as I reach up to the ceiling. Now, if you can challenge it more, as you lower your straight leg down, you're going to bicycle that bottom leg in and up. The challenge is to make sure that the two legs find their destination at the same time. So your top leg reaches straight to the ceiling as your bottom leg reaches straight on the floor. I'm going to do this one more time and then change direction. So now the top leg bends to go down and the bottom leg stays straight to go up. All the time I'm trying to maintain that good abdominal control here. But there's a whole lot of work here through the front of the hips and through the abdominals. But I'm working on lengthening my legs, trying to stretch through the front of the hip and the back of the hip. Last one and then bending those two legs in. So going into the shoulder bridge, so we've really worked here, it's nice to counter that. I'm going to do the articulated version first. So tip your triangle to your chest, lift your pelvis and then start to peel your spine away from the mat. Take a pause at the top of your bridge, so just lift to where you're comfortable lifting and then put your hands on your legs. Now we want to feel a straight diagonal line from shoulders to the knees, so no bump in the ribs, no dip at the hips. And we're trying to feel the spaces between the hips and the wrists here. So feeling the work through the backs of the legs and the bottom and really stretching through the front of the hips. And then slowly rolling down so that the back of the chest finds the mat, then the back of the ribs, back of the waist, pelvis comes down and then releasing the pelvis at the bottom. Let's do one more like this. So initiating from the pelvis, driving the movement from the abdominals, reinforcing that all the way up and all the way down. So you feel the segmental control that your abdominals have of the spine. Now at the bottom, we're going to keep the neutral position of the pelvis and the spine. So you're going to push down into your feet and lift your hips up. And then you're going to bend at the hips to lower down. So we're still initiating from the pelvis, but now we're driving through the hip muscles, really working into the backs of the legs and the buttocks. To get your lift, you've got to push downwards into your feet and send your knees forwards on the lowering phase. Almost feel like you're leading with your tailbone. So we're trying to lengthen through the front of the hips and then we're trying to bend at the hips to lower. And then holding it at the top, again, we want the softness to the ribs and we want to feel the upwards energy of the hips and the downwards energy of the rib cage. Now at the top, you're going to use an inhalation to lift the heels and then use your out breath to really push your heels hard into the floor and see if you can use that downwards push to get an upwards lift. So breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in and it's about trying to get those hips higher. Now check that the ribs are staying soft so you're focusing on the lift through the hips, not the lift through the ribs. The lift through the ribs starts to activate your back extensors. We want the hip extensors to be doing the work. We want the back extensors to be nice and relaxed on this occasion. So last one, we should be feeling a whole lot of heat through the bottom and then rolling down one bone by one and then releasing that pelvis. Oh, it can be nice to hold those knees in as well because it's a lot of work for those glutes. Now rolling onto your side, so from here guys, we're going to set up for working to the side of the hips now. So legs are bent, heels, hips, bottom elbow on the same straight line, open the chest and widen the collarbones and then straighten that top knee. See if you can lift the bottom waist and rib cage further away from the floor here, activating the abdominals to support the spine. 
Now your top leg is going to lift up and back like an arc and then it goes forwards and downwards as far as that knee, keeping a nice straight leg. So the up and back, we're really getting that activation into the outer thigh and those shoulder bridge muscles, the muscles that we've just worked. So trying to keep that pelvis as stable as possible as we do it. So if we can keep the alignment through the torso, it helps you build endurance in the spinal stabiliser. It becomes an abdominal exercise and not just a hip and leg exercise. Now, if you can challenge it more, you're going to lift the bottom hip up as you lift your top leg. We're just going to do three of these and going a little bit quicker with them, pushing down into the elbow and the knee, really getting into those glutes on both sides now. And then pushing yourself up to sitting and we're going to have a little stretch. Both sides are working, but for me, the um, straight leg was the hard working leg. So we're doing a little figure of four here, ankle on the thigh in the opening, and then pushing my chest forwards and upwards. If you prefer to hug the knee into the chest, if that's the kind of stretch for you, for your knee, then you can opt for that too. So we're going to do that on the other side. So setting up, we want heels, hips, bottom elbow in line, and we want to feel the organisation of the torso. So that'll lift through the waist and the ribs. Oops, I've noticed I've not got enough space there. I will scoot it up off my mat. Okay, so um, one thing to note is if your knees are up here and you're tied through the hamstrings, um, when you straighten that leg, it's gonna cause you to round your back. So we want the hips to be in a nice opened position here. So once we've got that nice open position, find the lift through the ribs and then we go up and back, forwards and down. So again, it's like we're painting a bit of an arc with the leg. It doesn't have to go a lot back, it just wants to feel like it is going back. And we want to make sure that we're not starting to sink and drop into that bottom shoulder. Really working to keep a straight leg, no movement through that torso. Any tension in the neck with these side lane exercises, you can turn your head down to look at that bottom elbow. So we're going to do four quick ones, so four and three and two and one and release. So stretching through those glutes, figure of four or hug your knee in, your choice. So finding that nice stretch and then we're going to go into leg kick. So coming onto your belly. So elbows underneath your shoulders here. Ideally we want the feet to be, um, the legs rather to be roughly hip distance apart but that's going to be dictated by the flexibility at the front of the hips. So choose the position your body needs. And guys, if you've got a delicate lower back, you could choose to stack your hands and let your forehead come down on the back of your hands like this. We want to focus on lifting the chest up and really reaching those shoulders away from the ears. Think of your front ribs lifting away from the floor, slightly drawing that pubic bone up to the belly button. So I really feel active in my core. Everything's working. So you're going to bend your knee and you're going to go kick, kick, extend kick, kick, extend. So that's the easy bit. The hard bit is the control it takes in the torso to keep that pelvis completely still on those kicks. Adding a bit of ankle mobility, flex, flex, point, flex, flex, point. So I'm focusing on my pubic bone to belly button connection and pushing down in my forearms as I do this. So keeping that core really engaged to minimise any movement through that pelvis. So the benefit of this exercise is a stretch for the quadriceps, the muscles down the front of the thigh, so really good for promoting mobility through the front of the hip, through the front of the thigh. I'm going to do this one more time. But for me, it's challenging to keep everything stable. So prone frogs, you're going to stack your hands, bend your knees and bring your heels together. So the knees want to be the width of your elbows, but again, if you need wider knees to get that pelvis level, let that happen. Flex your feet, so have some activity through the feet, it's just visualising the soles of the feet facing the ceiling, or trying to sense that they are. And then draw the pubic bone up 
and lift the knees up, driving the feet up in a straight line and then lower down. Okay, so it might be, guys, that there's actually no lift through the knees. You're willing that to happen and it doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen, it's still an effort trying to lift the knees. You're still going to be really working into the backs of the legs and your bottom. So the benefits are in the trying. The main thing here is trying to make sure there's no sinking collapse into the lower back. So again, abdominal control here, keeping tension out of those shoulders. So pressing those heels firmly to get more glutes and inner thighs. And then if you can hold the knee lift, and if that knee lift is more of a, a feeling than a reality, then just hold the feeling and then start um, beating your heels. I'm going to apply the 100 breath pattern. So you're going to breathe in for five counts and then breathe out for five counts. So doing that 10 times is your 100, hence it's named the 100 breath pattern. Trying to again keep the movement in the torso really still. So no movement in the torso. Still trying to keep pushing the feet upwards, even though the heels are beating inwards, keeping those shoulders down. And then one more in breath for five counts, one more out breath for five counts, and then releasing down. And then just pushing yourself out of that, really stretching through the spine and through those hips. Okay, and then come down to your bottom. So we're nearly there, guys. Just a couple more exercises to do. So coming back onto the pelvis, so in that seated posture. And if you needed the blocks or the cushions before, now the time to grab them. So feet um, roughly as wide as those shoulders and then interlock your hands behind your head. So we're trying to find that vertical pelvis lifting the upper back out of the lower back, thumbs just running down the base of the neck. Now on your next out breath, twist to the right, using your in breath to centre and then changing sides. So focus on that pelvic stability and head and neck stability. So feel that your head is rotating because it's following the torso as the abdominals turn the torso. No twist underneath the sit bones. So on your twist, your triangle stays square to the wall in front of you as your chest bone turns to the side wall. So by keeping the pelvis stable, the neck stable, we're optimising the movement through the ribcage part of the spine. Now to bring in the legs, you're going to rotate to one side and then lift up one leg. Hold it if you can. And the challenge here is to be tall in the spine. Lower the leg, centre the body, twist. So see if you can lift without leaning back or without slumping. So that takes a strong upper back. It takes strong quads. We're just going to do this one more time each side because these are hard. So again, check that the shoulders are down. Feel that you're pulling yourself forwards and upwards, lifting that leg. Last one, twist, pick that leg up. Can you lift it any higher without going behind the pelvis? And then release. Okay, so countering that, bend the legs in, hands behind the back. So you're gonna roll the shoulders back and fingertips can either be pointing inwards towards your bottom or um, hours to the side walls. So whatever feels kindest for your wrists. And if it doesn't feel kind to be on your wrist, you could do this on your elbows. It's a little bit more challenging for shoulder mobility than your elbows. So you're going to roll the shoulders back, push down into your hands and, and lift up through the chest. So activating through that mid-back, stretching through the chest, stretching through the shoulders. And then send your knees forwards, lift your hips up. So we're going into tabletop, really opening up through the front of the thighs. And the front of the thigh should welcome that stretch after that last exercise. Now I'm tightening my chest as well as my hips, so I can really feel that stretch through the front of the body. And okay, as the hips are lower, I feel that you're lifting the chest up, so we're not sinking down when gravity is taking us down. Now if you can, legs straight, shoulders back, chest up, and then do the straight leg version. So pushing downwards into your feet, into your hands, I gaze forward so we're not tipping that neck back. Again, keep pushing down into the floor. Can't really engage. 
and then releasing. Come into the front of the mat and we're going to do a teaser. So teaser is everyone's dreaded exercise. It really challenges abdominal control, balance, takes a lot of strength through the hips and through the upper back. We're going to give it a go. There's as many options, guys. So legs are going to be bent and you're going to curl that pelvis backwards, trying to keep that length through the upper back and then lifting one leg and then the other. Now, um, I used to find teaser really easy until someone told me how to do it properly. So I used to sit upright, so I was on the sitting bones and not just behind them. You've got to really curl that pelvis under so you feel your abdominal contraction, lifting your upper back out of your lower back and then see if you can hold that without, see if you can hold your balance and your abdominal contraction without holding your legs. Now, if this is enough for you, stay with it. Rest when you want to, come back into it when you can. If you can challenge it more, we're going to go for the roll down. So you're rolling your pelvis away from your legs. Your triangle sit into your chest. You're coming down one bone by one. The legs stay where they are to come up. Chest bone rounds forwards. Keep drawing your pubic bone up to your belly button, but then lift your chest upwards to the ceiling. See if you can do it with straight legs. So legs stay still, get some more control now. The abdominals have to work harder now against more weight because two straight legs are heavier than two bent legs. So it takes more ab control. Coming up, chest bone rounds forwards. Again, you've got to keep that pubic bone up to your belly button. See if you can lift your chest. See if you can lift your arms. Holding it. And then release. So just stretching through those hips. So opening the knees, stretching through the inner thighs, and we're going to finish off with a hip flexor stretch. So just taking one knee behind you, and then your front foot, you're just going to help it into a lunge position. And I like to have my two hands inside the foot, so the inner elbow is pushing the knee out, but trying to drop that back hip down to the floor. So a nice long spine here, shoulders lengthening down away from the ears. Again, it's a nice time to just reflect on the work that you've done, feeling the whole body here. Okay, and then just taking the leg out to the side and changing sides. So trying to sink the hips down, lengthen that spine. So you'll notice that you're stretching through that front hip, but I'm also working on the stretch that I'm getting through in the hip flexors on that back hip. And then release. So guys, I hope you've felt the benefit of that hip and leg workout, and I hope that you come back for more. Thank you very much.